This week on the 215, we go foraging in South Philly, organic farming in West Philadelphia, and taste the sweet nectar of South Jersey bees. Good evening and welcome into the 215. I'm your host, Freeland Moore. Mike has the night off tonight, but he is missing out on an incredible scene here behind me. We're on Germantown Ave at the Wick Historic House and Gardens. The family actually lived here from 1690 to 1973. And I'll let you in on a little secret. They didn't really throw out anything. So there's so much to see here. But first things first, we're gonna get to our first story of the evening and go on a nature walk with a wild foodie in Philadelphia. lot about plants but getting out here feeling them tasting them figuring out how to use them takes everything to a different level well, these are okay. this is known as groundsel tree and this is like the perfect thing for cold flu chop it up and you make some tea out of it that tea is gonna be bitter but it's one of those things where the bitter makes you better I think we just really need to stop believing the hype that it all has to be bought, it all has to be bought in, and that there's no value here. I'm Lady Danny, urban forager, rebel crone, and this is one of my favorite spots to forage in Philadelphia. I call them plants formerly known as weeds, because if you know what it does, then all of a sudden you make that shift in your mind and it's no longer a weed, it's a plant that has value and you treat it differently. When you see this on the street, you're just gonna think it's a weed. It pops up everywhere. And there are many different kinds of plantain. It has kind of a mushroomy flavor. So one of the first things that I learned to make with forage foods was like a risotto, using that to give it some mushroom flavor. The seed heads, especially when they're green like this, can be sauteed and they have a flavor not too different from asparagus. So this would be the part if you were chewing it for toothache that you would take that. If you get a cut or something on your finger and you don't have a Band-Aid, you can take a large enough plantain leaf and then simply pop it through the other side. There you go. Ta-da! It's an amazing kind of medicine cabinet in just one plant. So the fact that people step over it all the time and think it's just a weed, you're missing so much. I think after COVID, when I had that experience of going into like a drugstore and there was nothing on the shelves, it really made me realize that we have become so disconnected from what Mother Earth provides that can feed us and heal us. So it became even more important for me to gain this information and then to share as much of it as I can to people who are willing to listen. If you mix rosemary and stinging nettle seeds, in with an oil, you can make a salve that works really well for the pains and aches that you get in the small bones of your hands and feet. There is not a time that I have made a tincture of uh, prickly lettuce and I've had a joint ache or a headache that I have not felt better. There is not a time when I've been coughing and hacking and coming down with the beginning of a flu and I haven't taken elderberry um, syrup and felt better. So yeah, it does work, but if you're expecting everything to work instantly, probably not. But if you're expecting it to work effectively and with fewer side effects, it definitely does. You see how it exudes that white sap? That sap is really where the medicinal properties come from. What's your nine to five job? I sell medical reprints. Pharmaceutical companies will hit me up and say, we're looking for such and such an article because we want to promote our drug. And so I facilitate those sales to them. I work as a show to like sell like that stuff to drug companies. And then my penance is like hanging out in nature and healing people from the ground up. So yes. I believe in the irony has not escaped me. When somebody looks like your mom is like walking out digging up stuff, it's it's less threatening, I think, than you see people coming out with like all this gear. 
I think the hardest one I have to overcome all the time is people afraid of getting this from these cracks of the sidewalk. Yeah, I don't want it at the same height the dogs are peeing on, but guess what? Dog pee washes off. Pesticides and a lot of other things don't. With everything that I do, it is really about preserving natural spaces in the city. I'm a city girl. So how cool is that? It's like the trifecta of foraging. People have this habit of thinking that you have to go out far in the burbs or other places to have access to green. And I think if we really look around at the plants that are here in the city, to get food and nutrition in areas that are underserved by supermarkets. You have to be able to see the beauty regardless of what's around. There is so much value that we just negate because it's not this pristine setting that we've kind of bought into, like that's where it has to be. Farms can be in North Philly. Um, farms can be on top of buildings. Farms can be in the cracks of sidewalk. If you know what the plant is and you know the value of it, then you appreciate it. This is Lepidium virginianum, or poor man's pepper. These little coin-shaped seeds taste between say pepper and wasabi, because it gives you that like kind of sinus clearing thing. This is the cattail. Yule Gibbons used to call it the supermarket of the swamp, and it pretty much covers all of that. This is bull thistle. It is very prickly. When you cut it, ow, it actually is edible. If you take all of this off, you'll get a base that is very much like the base of an artichoke. Okay, so paper mulberry, this is a money shot. It looks like some sort of funky coronavirus. But what you're gonna do is run your teeth across that, and that's the fruity, fleshy bits. And it tastes like old school Hawaiian punch. Ugh. So you're gonna take these, and rub your teeth across, oh my God. There's like lots of edibles and medicinals all around you. You just have to pay attention. There you go. Today would be classified as a good day foraging. So for more on Lady Danny and foraging, you can head to our website at the bottom of your screen here. Well, when we come back, we're going from South Philly to West Philly and exploring an urban farm. And I'll also take you inside the Wick House and explore the gardens as well. You're not going to want to miss it. Keep it right here. <laughs> into the 215, still hanging out on Germantown Ave at the Wick Historic House and Gardens. Of course, this is the garden portion of the home. And believe it or not, behind me right here is the oldest rose garden in America. Yes, believe it, right here in Philadelphia on Germantown Ave is the oldest rose garden in America. And fun fact, there's actually two species of roses in that garden that they thought were extinct until they were rediscovered here in the 1970s. How cool is that? Well, speaking of gardening and farming and whatnot, let's take you to an urban farm in West Philadelphia. That's gonna trail over. <laughs> yes, I love that. If we want people to eat healthier and eat more plant-based, they need to be connected to the earth. I want to plant something. I have it in my book bag. Hey, it's nothing big, really. Everything in here is healing. This is really what we would call like a healing and a learning garden. It's a candle. These are sweet potato See? Kids come in here and they just are like, wow. I just, I just, I just picked it for fun, I guess. You're really tapping into like the innate um, sense of connection to nature and the earth that we all really have, that we're kind of being pulled away from. We could eat that. Are you brave? Not, that made jerk. I'm not a sucker. Like, am I right? <laughs> Go for it. I'll, I'll have one with you. All right. Well, wait, you got to drop yours on the ground. For I will. Okay. Plant. <laughs> Get Fresh Daily is a plant-based wellness community that really centers black people and black culture. This is actually hibiscus. We're patiently waiting for the flowers to come up, but I really would love for you to taste this. You can eat just the leaf? You can eat the leaf. So, cheers. Cheers. I would call Get Fresh Daily a lifestyle brand, and we really are looking to normalize 
and make access to health and well-being just a part of everyone's everyday life, regardless of their zip code or income. Do y'all just harvest it so y'all can cook here and um, the kids can eat or whoever comes through eats here? Or so can we, they come through and say, look, I need a couple of tomatoes to take home with me? Listen, tonight. I love that you're asking that because this is a community garden, so it's literally open to the community. We literally have people who drive down the street like, what are you doing with them? Collards! And you're like, come over here and get them. Being able to have the garden connected to our food and nutrition education programs was really essential to get people to recognize how much better they feel when they're outside in nature, connected to the earth, and then connected to community. So with this, we want to kind of gingerly just while we squeeze it. All right, and then pull it from the bottom. On the highest level, it's like we want people to come in, learn how to grow some food, learn how to use these foods in uh, foods that they make at home that have healing properties. This is all Tulsi holy basil. Um, Tulsi holy basil is also very medicinal. We always tell people like if you go to the store and get like Tulsi holy basil and a tea bag, that organic tea bag is gonna be about like $8. Mm. We are actually growing this and it's free to you. This is really getting into like our ancestral plants that we're growing. So this here is all sweet potato. So we just really love this effect too, thinking about like the impact on children and community coming through here just feels very magical with all of our flower beds here in the back with the sunflowers because of our location. You know, people are walking by a lot of times that have a lot of issues. I mean, there's a lot of mental health issues. There's a lot of alcoholism and drug use. Um, but to see those same folks walk by every day and just smile because they're like sunflowers are blooming um, is really, you know, really what it's about. It's, it's very, uh, it's very powerful. It's very heartwarming. Oh, here's one. Here, why don't yeah. we have you um, harvest right, it okay. yourself? Yeah. So you twist it. So we twist it? Yeah. Like this Twist, here? twist, 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 twist. Look at that. Voila! I'm glad you told me because I was just going to. I know, there's an art to these things. <laughs> we believe that, you know, the earth is, uh, is intended to be free. So this will cost you very little, except love, time, and consideration. This is, these are green onions, so make sure that they have as much sun as possible. We'll put them in the front. It's, it's just really phenomenal to recognize how much people really do appreciate be beauty. Beautiful spaces, beautiful spaces to connect. Like, that's like a healing power in and of itself to see other people experience joy in a very simple and natural way that's not um, materialistic. It's or literally organic, and I think it's contagious. So Get Fresh Daily is open every Wednesday and Thursday from 12 to 6, and every other Thursday, they actually have a pay-as-you-wish, which is extra cool. So if you want more information, just head on to their website at the bottom of your screen here. Well, when we return from break, we're going to go inside the house and check out all the cool stuff they have here at the Wick Historic House and Gardens. Don't go away. <laughs> So I promised you a tour of the interior of the Wick Historic House. And here we are right now. Here's Kim. She's the executive director here. Um, this house is incredible. One family lived here for over 300 years, yes? Yes, one Quaker family, the Wisters and the Haineses, they lived here for almost 300 years. They were leaders in business and in industry and horticulture and education, and they kept everything. So we have over 10,000 objects here, and then 100,000 manuscripts that go along with those objects are down at the American Philosophical Society. So we have a full record of one Philadelphia family for almost 300 years here at WIC. And the things that you have are just mind-blowing. What is your favorite object here at the Wick House? Oh, my favorite object, it's so hard to pick among them, but <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a really beautiful portrait of Reuben Haynes that's done by Rembrandt Peel. We have a beautiful blue chair that was owned by Ben Franklin and then bought by the family and has wow. been here for you know almost 250 years that one of Reuben's daughters, little Hannah Haynes, um, actually slapped the Marquis de Lafayette in the face while he was sitting in that chair. So there's so many great objects that are filled with so many fun family stories that go along with them. That's incredible. 
incredible. Now, with a 300-year-old house, there's no there's no ghosts in here, No right? ghosts is here. It? it is a very peaceful Quaker family that <laughs> lived here, so uh, nothing haunting the premises. <laughs> Love to hear that. Okay, so people can just come right in and, and take a tour of this thing, right? Yeah, we're open Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from noon to 4. Um, our grounds are open Tuesday through Saturday, so if you just want to explore the gardens and the farm, you're welcome to do that. But tours of the house are Thursdays through Saturdays. And this place is just absolutely incredible, the inside and the outside. And you also have a ton of different events going on. The, the yeah. Bee Festival is your big, your main event? Yeah, right? we have the Philadelphia Honey Festival coming up September 16th. It's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. We have honey tastings. You can see inside the beehive, get some honey extractions. There's even a guy who will put bees on his face and make a bee beard. Oh, I don't so know it's about a that. a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds incredible. And of course, you know, my first thought when I see these beautiful gardens and this wonderful, charming house, you can rent this for private events as like weddings and whatnot. Yes, we do do some private events. Um, it is a nice little place to have a wedding or a gathering. Mm -hmm. Small corporate events, we're open for anything. Oh, this is just incredible. You have to come check out some of this stuff because as she said, they didn't throw away anything. There's all sorts of things from all the generations uh, and it's a great little slice of America. It's like a little time capsule yes. of 300 years of American history. You gotta come check it out. Uh, we'll be right back with more 215 after the short time. segment is called Beyond the 215. We take you out of the city limits to really explore what this entire area has to offer. Today, we're going to head down to Medford, New Jersey, to Mill Creek Apiary. Now, they've been a bee farm since 2005, but thanks to the spider lanternfly, they got a little something new for you to taste. Most people, they don't even know that these things exist out on farms. Well, it opens up this whole understanding of where our food comes from and why bees are so important. First thing, we just get our smoker going. We just use pine needles. It smells good. This prevents the bees from getting in. Getting stung in the face is no fun. We just want to give it a little bit of smoke at the entrance, let them know that we're here. We're going to show you some bees. A lot of people think that the, the queen is the ruler, that she makes all the decisions, which is not the case. All the decisions that are made are made by consensus. There are decisions in terms of when they're going to swarm, how many drones they have to raise, where their nutritional sources are, nectar and pollen sources. Th these are all things that they have to agree on as a group. They're not told what to do. You know, we could learn a lot from the bees. Honey storefronts are not something you see in every, every town. So I really didn't think it would be worth having a space, paying the rent. I just didn't think people would come to the door. We got an awesome response. People walk in the door, they feel good in here, it smells good. Wildflower honey is everything the bees can get to. Everything in their flight range, they'll bring back nectar from all the different flowers that are out there. That can change through the season, you know, depending on what's blooming. And that changes the flavor of the honey. That's what's cool about having the honey bar. You just kind of go through and taste things side by side and, and really decide what you like. It's kind of like walking into a winery and getting to taste all the wines. A nice local raw honey will taste so much more flavorful than anything you've had before. This is a sweet pepper bush honey. It tastes like honeysuckle and, and hyacinth flowers. It's that uh, floral. It's just delicious and totally so unique. The spotted lanternfly, we should hate it. It's a terrible insect, invasive. But for us, when the spotted lanternfly eats the sap of the tree, it digests the amino acids, but it passes the sugars. That sugary substance they produce is something that the bees collect as a nectar source. They bring it back to the hive, as, you know, as though they were visiting a flower, and it produces a very dark, rich, smoky, barbecue saucy 
honeydew. We call it honeydew because it's not from the nectar of a blossom. It's like molasses, but it tastes like barbecue sauce. And it's just opposite end of the spectrum from that. And totally unique. Their mood can be affected by the weather, by the season. This is the sound of a happy hive. They're just, it's a nice low buzz. It's meditative when you're beekeeping. You know, it's, it's, it's quiet work. You're, you always hear the, the buzz of the bees. So it's a job to get done. There's a purpose to be out here, but there's always that pause, whether it's here on a beautiful farm like this or out in the middle of the Pine Barrens. I find myself often out there just in awe of what nature gives us. So if you're in the mood to be a little bit more adventurous and try something new, just head onto their website right here at the bottom of your screen for more information. Well, guys, that does it for this week's episode of the 215. Thank you so very much for joining us. And remember, we'll see you right back here next Tuesday at 6.30. Take care.